um, will go on with the flow of the Spirit. But I do want to recognize someone beforehand, so because I, I want, I feel in the Holy Ghost to uh, to do this. Um, this day is probably particularly hard for Olivia because her mother is not here, and so I have a gift for all of you, but I want to give Olivia's gift to her. Thank you, dear. Um, I want to give Olivia's gift to her beforehand because I want her to understand that even though her mother's not here, the memory and the prayers that her mother prayed, they are still here. And so I want Olivia to come so I can give her her gift. These are, um, I, I, I got these particularly, you'll understand more once we get started, but I got these particularly, they're heart-shaped measuring spoons. And it'll go right along with what I'm going to talk about this morning, the measure of your worth. And Olivia may struggle sometimes with that, and um, she's going to hang on to this as a memory of the prayers that mom prayed for you and the memories that you have of mom. And one day you'll see her again. I love you, girl. Um, I want us to stand. I want to get Brother Medville to pray, and then I'm going to let you guys sit right back down because I, I, I have a little lengthy reading, and unlike my husband, I don't let like y'all to stand while I'm doing all this reading. So I'm going to go ahead and get uh, Brother Netterfield to pray, and then I'll tell you what what my scripture is. We'll read, and then I'm going to tell you what my, what my title is. Brother Netterfield? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Her husband also, and he praised her. 
Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. I, uh, I, weren't, I felt like that God had dealt with me about this several days before uh, before we talk about uh, my coming here for Mother's Day. It is something that I've struggled with myself and uh, maybe I'm the only one that it's for. But I feel as though this word is for some others here today. And for the most part, I'm going to be speaking to older mothers. Last year when I was here, we talked about uh, the importance of a mother and that was basically when we were rearing our children. But today, I want to talk to the experienced mothers. And that's the title of, of my subject, Wanted, Experienced Mothers. And um, I have struggled most recently, I guess, when Candace graduated from nursing school on December the 12th. I have struggled with what is my purpose now because my kids are grown uh, and they don't need me anymore. My job is done. And so I've struggled with my worth and what is my place here and where does God want me to be? And uh, I don't want to say that it's a sorrowful feeling, like I'm feeling sorry for myself, because I really don't think that's what it is. It's just a feeling of kind of being lost. Uh, has anybody else experienced that? Okay. Uh, I just was wondering if it was just me, because, you know, I mean, I was married very young, and I had children very young, so all of my life, this is what I have done, is prepared my home for my husband, who worked, he's worked hard ever since I've known him. My, my uh, friends in the neighborhood used to make fun of me because I didn't work, so I kept my house clean. I had a hot meal on the table every night. Uh, I rounded up my kids from the neighborhood. They bathed, they did homework. We ate dinner together. And uh, so that's all I've done all my life. I'm 51. Candace graduated in December. so. I've been raising kids for a long time. And that's all I've known. And it's all I ever wanted to do. Let me just make that clear. I can remember as a small child, that was all that I wanted to do was be a mother. That was it. I didn't want to do anything else. And um, so I've been struggling with uh, what, what, what am I supposed to be doing now? Well, my husband wants me to work. <laughs> Can you imagine that? He wants me to work. When I tell him I, I'm going to work an extra day, he's like, yes! <laughs> but there's got to be something else besides work, right? <laughs> right? Can I get an amen? Amen! amen. <laughs> something besides work. Um... So I've been looking for answers to that, and and I think that I found a few. And I think that um, the first thing that you should consider is that if you're still here, that means that God is not finished with you Come yet. On. Come on, there is something else for you to do. Yes, Amen. Yes. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to remember, that if we're still here, God still has something for us to do. And the object would be that we need to find out what it is that we need to do. Okay? But in Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 31, it says, The hoary head is a crown of glory. If it be found in the way of righteousness. Okay? 
So that word there, H-O-A-R-Y, means grayish, white, oh. How many of us fall into that category in some way? <laughs> okay, so what it's saying here is that that is a crown of glory if, and that two-letter word is big, if it's be found in the way of righteousness. Okay? So we need to stay on the straight and narrow path. Alright? In Genesis 18, 11 through 14 is where it talks about Abraham and Sarah and she's wanting a child and she's old. And she says, I mean, I'm too old to have a baby. And she laughed. Okay? But in the end, at the appointed time, Sarah had a son. Okay? Even though she was old, the promise was still fulfilled. Okay? And I think that sometimes I myself think, you know, um, getting on up there. I used to think that I was, you know, invincible. Never was I going to die. I've since learned better than that. But this feeling has overtaken me and possibly it's a feeling of fear. Think you know, that my life is maybe almost over and I don't really have much left to live. And, you know, um, I don't think that's a spirit that comes from God. I think that's a spirit that comes from the enemy, that spirit of fear that would overtake us, okay? But I want to, I want to continue, uh, maybe continue is not the right word, I want to be as pleasing to God at this time of my life as I can be, possibly be. As a matter of fact, I should be even more so than I was because I'm not distracted by the small children. See how Sister Brooke is dragging that kid out from underneath the chair? <laughs> I love those babies. I love them. And hey, there was a day I raised my children on the front pew. And, and they just learned on the front pew. But but I'm not distracted by that anymore. So my focus can more so be upon God and, and the works that he would have me to do. And that's what I want the experienced mothers to realize this morning, that your work is not over. It's not done. There's still something that God would have for you to do. In Titus chapter 2, verse 3 through 5, it says the aged, the aged women, that be me and some of you other folks out there, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness. <laughs> I know he's not talking to me. <laughs> Not false accusers, not given to much wine. Notice it says much. Thank you. 
So this right here tells me that us older mothers are teachers. If you notice some of these little um, things that I printed up that are on the altar, some of them are very funny, and some of them are, you know, pretty uh, serious. But one of them over here is something about a mother can do uh, better research than an FBI agent. I know this mom can. All right? No, I'm going to find out. See, mothers were born with this sixth sense. You know? Like, I can't tell you the times that I just had a feeling that something wasn't right. Now, now don't get me wrong. I know that my kids probably got away with stuff that I don't know nothing about. Thank God. But, but that's the way that God made us mothers. We just have that feeling. We, we, uh, one of the, one of the things that I printed up said something about, uh, a child doesn't have to say anything. A mother knows, a mother knows what a child's trying to say. We just know that. And that's part of the, the glory of being a mother. But I don't think that, that those things that we're blessed with, uh, only are for our children. We can be teachers of young ladies that are not our children. Yes. Olivia's not my child. But without even realizing or trying to, I am an example to her. Whether I choose to be a good example or a bad example. Okay? So, so we can be teachers to children, young ladies, that are not our children. Because I think that there are so many children today who do not have that godly, motherly influence and leadership. So it is our job. Because look, we done been there and back. Okay? We got plenty of wisdom to share. Now, whether they want to hear it or not, that's up to them. Because I can remember my grandmother saying stuff, and I, I would be like, I don't really need that. I, I don't really want that. But we have plenty to share. Okay? Um. In Psalms 92 and 14, it says, They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Uh, <laughs> I think that means spiritual, Sister Jennifer. Because every battle that you fought has strengthened you. Amen. 
You've got spiritual endurance because you're still here. And you definitely have spiritual wisdom. Okay? And let me just tell you a truthful fact. There is no value in us being old if we aren't godly. None at all. Because if we aren't a godly role model, if we aren't a godly example, a godly leader, then we failed. We failed our own and the others that are around us. So I want you to think about and consider that even though us experienced mature mothers have reached a different level, that our job is not over. There's still work for us to be done. We're still valuable to the kingdom of God. I want to share um, a story. It's a brief story, and you're probably going to wonder what in the world is this woman talking about, and why is she talking about this in church? But I think that the more I go along, you'll you'll understand what I'm where I'm going. Um, for for uh, Easter, my middle daughter brought home four baby ducks for my babies for Easter. Well, I sure didn't expect to fall in love with those baby ducks, but fall in love I did. And uh, we've been taking care of them. They actually bathed in my bathtub. And, you know, we just really enjoyed them. And so we made them like a little makeshift pen off the back side of my house where there's a my, my fence kind of has them boxed in, and so we just had to make a little wall for them with some chicken wire. And we put, uh, we got a big uh, dog crate that we put them in at night to keep them safe and warm and everything. And they've grown very, very, very quickly, like from little bitty ducks to big old ducks. You know, but they're only. Um, somebody help me out. How, how old are they? They only two and a half, two months maybe? How long ago was Easter? Yes, ma'am. About two months old. But they look full grown to me. I mean, they're not yellow no more. They white, you know, and they big. Anyway. So we have cared for them as, you know, as ba from babies to what I thought they was full grown. And uh, so we lock them up every night in this little crate, and then in the morning we go out and let them out, feed them and water them. They got a little pool they swim around in. We just sit out there, and, you know, and my old ducks. They die in that pool. Yeah, that's my little babies. That's my babies. And I didn't expect to love them, but I love them. So we, we got four, because we got four grandbabies. So each baby got a duck. Well, one night, Rachel forgot to lock them up. And we woke up the next morning, and two of our baby ducks had been killed. And I was so, so upset. What in the world came out here and killed my ducks? 